Listen. Listen, listen. <laughs> Welcome to week three, episode three of Listen with Tania and Wynn. I am Tania Briscoe Easterling. I am Wynn. How are you? <laughs> she is Wynn Briscoe. I am. <laughs> And as always, it's our privilege to be able to spend the next hour and change with you guys. So um, if you don't already, this will be a great time to go to our page on Facebook. You can find us on Facebook and just search for Listen with Tania and Win. Make sure you guys are liking the page. Make sure you've got your notifications turned on. So it'll let you guys know um, when we're going live or when we're posting um, any videos or any additional content. Feel free to comment. Uh, we'd love to hear your feedback. We'd love to hear your comments and ideas. And uh, as always, we love it when you share. So share away, share it with people that you know need to hear it, share it with your friends, share it with your families, share it with your frenemies. Uh, whoever you know needs and could benefit and enjoy uh, some fun time uh, with God and with and with us two ladies just having a good time for a couple hours. So uh, we wanted to make sure that we took a second to just give a special thank you, some serious love to all of our followers and the people that have taking the time to comment and to share our videos with other people. We just thank you guys so much. So full of gratitude um, for, um, for the shares and for the likes and for the comments and the feedback. So keep it going. Um, we definitely love and appreciate it. So we well, are. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. We want to give continual thank you to the viewers for liking, sharing, as Tania said, because we are still new at this and we're so glad that you're giving us feedback, um, that you are enjoying what God has given us to share. And even though it's sometimes a little, uh, you know, silly and fun um, at the core, it's always great content. So we thank you so much for tuning in and taking your time. Yeah. So uh, we are going to get started here and we wanted to just share with you guys. I know we've been taking just a little bit of time every week to share about us so that everyone has the opportunity just to truly get to know us because we recognize everybody uh, doesn't know us very well. So we wanted to share last week, we talked about some of our passions and some of our hobbies and interests. And this week we thought we'd uh, have a fun moment and share about food. So when, why don't you share yes. with everyone? What is, what's your favorite foods? Wow. Um, well, as Tania said, most may not realize we're, you know, vegan, vegetarian, pescatarians. I'm a flexitarian, which means whatever my body craves. Um, so and I eat fairly clean. So favorite foods for me. Um, would you like it as you had broken it down? So um, I don't really have a favorite starch. And if it was, I would say it would be a sweet potato if it was a favorite starch, to be honest with you. I know it's probably clean <laughs> still, but. Don't really have a starch. What's your favorite starch if you had to choose one? I'm going to have to go with the mac and cheese ministry. Mm. But, yeah, just just give me mac and cheese. To me, that hits all the food groups. I, yeah. I would argue hands down that it is a meal all by itself. By it itself. needs nothing else with it. That's you know, true. if you're going to throw some lobster in it, if you're going to throw some shrimp in it, Okay, that's right. Bonus, right? That's bonus. But I'm happy, yeah. happy with the mac and cheese. That is very true. I think if I would have to pick a another starch, but it's really not a. It's more of a side, uh, but it's a staple with me, and that's cornbread. And that would be um, a starch, 
as well as a side. So I think it depends on where you are in the country, if it's considered a starch or if it's considered a side. So I just think that varies. So. All right. I feel like they could be both and it's okay. It's a starch. Yeah, absolutely. The mac and cheese exactly. and it's an entree and it's yes. a dessert, depending on how, yes. you wanna, how you want to play with it. It could be a dessert too. So I'll, I'll take it any way I can get it. That's very true. That is very true. Love it all. So that would be for me a starch my, would be 100% um, cornbread and then a backup would be a sweet potato. So um, mm. when it comes to meats, um, oh my, let's see. I would say my favorite meat, if I had to choose, would probably be fish, and it probably would be a croaker fish, which is local to our area, where we are on the East Coast. So that would be my favorite fish. Okay. Uh, my favorite meat or protein, I would have to say, is also going to be fish, narrowing it down to salmon at number one. And yes, I said salmon and not salmon. Um, yes. Salmon, because on the East Coast we pronounce the L. So, no. <laughs> well, look, little sissy who's from Anchorage is giving you the thumbs up with the salmon pronunciation. Right. right. Uh, there is an L for those who are <laughs> unaware of how salmon is spelled and right. it's pronounced. So, love the salmon. And back up to that would be whiting, which I think might also be native to more of the East Coast. Uh, but mm -hmm. whiting is a great fish that's flaky and light and doesn't smell like fish. So it's a great non-fishy fish. It's picking so up the sea. Yeah, basically. Yes. If you bread it and fry it, it's, it's a chicken of the sea. Oh, yes. So, ooh, your favorite vegetable, your favorite veggie. I'm a veggie girl. Ooh, so that's tough for me. But I would say Top two would be tied between spinach and broccoli. Mm. Those are my top two tied vegetables okay. among all the ones that I love. You get you get a thumbs what is your, up. What is, what is your you get a thumbs vegetable? up on the broccoli. You get thumbs up on the broccoli. Um, I'm gonna have to give you a note on the spinach. You get a note on the spinach. <laughs> um, so you said broccoli. Did you say broccoli? I said thumbs up on the broccoli. Yeah. Okay. But thumbs down on the spinach. So the uh, favorite for me would also be broccoli. And okay. then close runner up is green beans. Okay. Green okay. Beans is number a very close number two. So those are favorite veggies. So what about snacks? Mm. So when you when you want to snack, what's your go-to snacks? That's true. Being a clean eater, um, I don't snack often, but when I do snack, I am a, I know I have a second place for Cheez-Its, but number one for me is smart food popcorn. That That is my number one all favorite if I have to snack. Oh, she's so funny. So she's bringing it over production, but in part and party size, because if we're going to do it, we're going to do it. Right. So, of um, course. so, <laughs> so if I'm going to snack uh, and I'm on vacation this week, so um, I'll spare you all the picture of the snack bar. Um, but it truly is an entire credenza uh, covered in snacks. So um, and don't judge because we're we're splurging this week. But um, yeah. Smart food popcorn, number one, and cheese its number two. So I am close to you on the popcorn, but definitely kettle corn, girl. I'm a yes, kettle, a kettle. Corn. Give me the sweet mm -hmm. and the salty mixed together all day That's long. So mm -hmm. about the kettle corn from whether it's at the stand in the town center or if I'm at a fair when there used to be fairs or carnivals, if I see a kettle corn stand, yeah, it's over. It's over for me. Mm -hmm. Kettle corn is my number one. If I had to choose a runner up on snacks, I mm. Mm, really so bad for me, so bad for me, but tastes so good. It's going to have to be the red bag of Doritos. 
Ooh, we did have the nacho cheese. The red bag. Something about old school, original Doritos. I don't crave them often, thankfully, because of course, yes. not the best, not the best option. <laughs> <laughs> but it's deliciousness, right? So yeah. that's the key. If you're going yeah. to eat snacks, let it be, you know, at least something good that you enjoy. Don't don't half tail your snack experience. That's the worst. And then you're regretting that you wasted time with the snack, right? And it wasn't good. Right. So if you're going to do it, do it good. Exactly. So a little healthy with the popcorn, a little unhealthy with the Doritos. Beautiful life <laughs> balance. Life balance. Oh, so. It's all yeah. grain. It's all corn. <laughs> yes. That's yeah. cheese. Once again, hitting yeah. hitting some of the food groups. <laughs> it's a reach, but it's good, right? So exactly. we covered that's that's good. Some of the things that we enjoy. Um, what's your favorite candy? That is oh, for anybody that knows me, <laughs> non-chocolate is going to be Twizzlers. Do not ask me to share. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't share I well do at all. The Takes her back to her kindergarten days. She does not mm -mm. share snacks well. Mm -mm. No, I, I did not. I did not pass kindergarten with that lesson. <laughs> no. <laughs> at all. So, so, you know, don't hand me the little tin pack, the little tin thing of Twizzlers. It's like at the grocery store checkout. No, no, no. I'm going straight down the candy aisle and I'm going for the pound plus bag. Like definitely going for the shareable without yeah. sharing. And for the record, strawberry original Twizzlers, not black licorice, <sighs> not cherry nibs or the other brands that are out there. Yeah, I went back to cherry nibs. Like, no, <laughs> just give me straight up Twizzlers. That's my favorite, non chocolate. I had to go chocolate. It's gonna be a tie between a Snickers bar and a Kit Kat. Okay. Snickers and Kit Kats are life. That's where it's at for me. I would agree with you. Um, if I had to pick chocolate, chocolate for me would be Snickers. Again, I don't eat a lot of candy, but um, if I'm going to have chocolate, it's gonna have it's got to have nuts in the chocolate. Um, and you'll learn that about Tania and I as we go later on because um, you can never have enough nuts. And that's just a really great joke and you'll get it as you learn us more. Um, but uh, <laughs> especially in chocolate, honey, but I'm just saying, we love anything chocolate covered to a point. So Snickers is my number one. And if I had to pick a number two, it would be Twix. Um, and uh, m and peanuts, I agree with you, sir, is a very close second. Um, to my Snickers. So um, thank you to Tania's mister. We are, we're here on the peanut M&Ms um, yes. and you cannot have M&Ms without peanuts. You know what that's called? Trash. That's what that's called. So oh, you gotta chocolate. have, yeah, complete waste of chocolate without the nuts. Um, and then without chocolate, I don't really have a candy favorite that I am aware of without chocolate. It doesn't involve chocolate. Interesting. Very interesting. Good yeah, why would you, why would I waste? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we would we would never waste chocolate. We would never just waste plain chocolate. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. I mean I sat, we talked about it for a day. I'm like, what candy do I like that's non-chocolate? That's a favorite? Yeah. Thanks for making me think about that one, but I couldn't come up with one. So Mm -hmm. I'm not biased. So not even when you go to the movies, you're not getting anything that's non-chocolate, like your candy snack in the movies, like when you go to the movies. Obviously, Actually, when I go to the movies, uh, I typically am going to do popcorn. And um, if I don't do popcorn, I might every now and again do a nacho cheese. Um, but um, I agree with James. If it's going to be popcorn, it will be a peanut M&M. Um, if it's going to be a movie candy experience, so, yeah, I don't have a known chocolate option. I'll have to work on that maybe. Like maybe that's a new goal for 2021 is find a candy that's not covered in chocolate and start liking it. Yes. Yes. I don't know. So when I go to the movies, I get mad because I don't want to pay the price that they charge for Twizzlers. Yeah. 
So a lot of times- candy is a commitment for sure. Yeah, that's a splurge. That's a splurge. So a lot of times I'll end up with some Sour Patch Kids. So another mm. non-chocolate, but only, only when I want to be bad. Only when I want to be bad. <laughs> so yes, we love the Sour Patch Kids in this house. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They are tasty. Yeah, yeah. It's a, once again the sweet with the salty. I don't know what that is for me, but it's, it's bipolar tasteless. <laughs> Very well, might be. You know, <laughs> she said the twins are like that. I was like, you are right. After having something salty, they're like, let's have something sweet. So we yes. we get it honest in our DNA. Hereditary. Sure. Yes. So yes. Yes. So great. So I'm not at fault. Great. Yep. Good to know. Yep. So good to know. It is 100% their fault. There we go. We can blame it on them. So, um, but that's so a great we, little wrap up. Does anyone else out there watching have any favorites that uh, they like to share of any of the things that we covered from cornbread to, um, <laughs> to mac candy, to mac and cheese? And, cheese. <laughs> and we're on vacation this week and we had a pretty good, yesterday was a pretty good it was that crab and shrimp mac and cheese from a seafood restaurant, and mm -hmm. it was pretty good. With the little, with the obey, was it came together? Yes. Did you ship me some? We ate it. Okay. <laughs> I will still choose to love you. I will still choose to love you. We appreciate that. <laughs> I will remember the same. Well. I will remember the same love the next time I have an amazing taco. When you come to visit, that's when we can have these experiences. Uh, you want it fresh mm. and hot, right along with your other deliciousness. You definitely don't want to have to reheat it. It's not going to be good. Real talk. You right on that. You mm -hmm. right on that. But I'll, I'll have take those it. Those. But I'll still take it, even if I got to mm -hmm. reheat it. It's mac and cheese. So I'll it's true. Still it is it. very true. It was tasty. So we thought of you. <laughs> So I messed up because we were supposed to talk about God moments first before we even got into food. Yes. My bad. Okay. My bad. My bad. It's okay. We're foodies. So tonight's topic of food in all variations got us excited. So yeah. No worries. I know. Because now I want some mac and cheese. <laughs> so, no. so we always desire to see God in everything throughout our days. And so from this past week, when, what would you say was a God mm. moment for you if you had to pick just one? Wow, wow. I know. Um, oh, well, funny. Okay, so God moment this week was, um, <laughs> I sent it to you, which was my work cell phone. Um, you know, here's the funny yeah. joke. Um, we always are supposed to be listening. Um, so we hear when God says clearly what to do and what not to do. We talked about this for the last couple of weeks. Uh, following the instruction, that's what we're working on. So um, it was pretty clear I wasn't supposed to bring my work cell phone or work because I'm on vacation this week. And um, I, you know, I've had that phone for almost four years, took it out of the bag, put it on the charger, my usual nightly routine. So had told the team, you know, if you need to contact me this week while I'm on break, you know, send an email and um, I'll be checking it periodically, not continuously, but maybe once or twice a day, just making sure there was no fires, basically. Um, so put it on the charger before leaving home for vacation and it leaked out of my hand. I tell you not a lie. The phone leaked out of my hand onto the tile floor. The entire face shattered. Um, and God was so clear. He was like, I clearly instructed this be a week of rest, not a week of work. So the God moment in that was he was letting me know before I even attempted to disobey his orders, he was mm -hmm. acting on my future disobedience. <laughs> Just, so now, uh, I've ordered a new phone and it will be in and, um, and it is at home turned off with a cracked screen. And so the lesson learned in that was, um, be more obedient proactively. And I promise you, I have not, um, because I do not have the capability, I have not checked work email. And it's been great. 
So um, I'm super excited to just have some time to rest um, and um, recuperate, which is what I needed to do and spend some great time with my sissy and get away. So um, that was my God moment this week of, um, of the quote, what did I tell you saga that continues moment by moment. <laughs> love it. And I love that you even, your new phone didn't even come in in time for you to even try to take it with you. So like God that. was like, yeah, I tried to tell you. I tried to tell you, you wouldn't listen. So let me just give the phone the smack down. Literally. That was amazing. And I love how fast God responded to you, too. So he was Quickly. like, you're not even, you can't even pack it. You're not even no. going to pack it. No, not one scratch on the screen since 2016 to a full-blown shattered face. So that was your answer. So I, I encourage you all to, when God gives you instructions, listen, because otherwise it's pretty costly. Otherwise, unnecessary money to be spent. So true. So so true. That was a that was a good God moment. That was really good. Transparency and real. We're real and relevant on the show. So I figured I share. Back to that obedience tip is what mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. Um, so my God moment from this week is that I was excited and thankful that God finally answered a three plus year old prayer of having an office space again. So I had my own office space in the house for the record uh, up until about 2016. And then we downsized. And so when we downsized, I wasn't blessed to have my own office space anymore. And so my prayer had been for the past three years and change of, okay, God, you're calling me to do some things. You're telling me I need to be writing and I need to be creating. Um, and I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to start. But my heart really, really would love to have a beautiful office space. So he answered that prayer. Finally, this past week, I am happy to be sitting at a desk in my home, in my house for the first time. In, in over four years to actually get to sit at an actual desk, not a folding table, <laughs> not using an end table, you know, not using the pool table, which is what sometimes I've even been using. So right. just so thankful to be able to actually sit in my office, which is where I'm at right now, y'all, in my office at my desk um, that came in this week. And just looking forward to all that God's going to do in this amazing office space. So that was my that was my God moment. Just him answering a long-standing prayer and him caring about everything that we care about, right? So absolutely. And saying, yeah, I hear you. I care about it. I need you to be obedient first. I need you to start writing first. I need you to start with this talk show first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And then, and then, yep. I promise to bless you with the desires of your heart. So that was my awesome God moment from this past week. And it's a beautiful desk. Thank you. Oh, it is. It is. And it's glass. I got it in glass, you guys, so that I can actually uh, write on it with dry erase markers. Just something God laid on my heart. He was like, hey, as you're, as you're hearing from me, as things come to your heart, no need to grab pen and paper, you know, I can write right on the desk. So, yeah, so great. So today's trending topic, when you want to set us up with today's trending topic? Uh, no problem. So we always cover typically, uh, if you follow the show, our trending topics, faith, forgiveness, freedom, family, fashion, finance, fitness, and of course, we are going to cover food is going to be our trending topic. So do you want to uh, give them an overview of uh, food from a biblical perspective? I would love to. So there's a scripture that God had laid on my heart this week while we were in preparation for today's episode. 
And it's, I don't think it's one that's always associated with food, but God was like, yeah, this, this scripture applies. So the scripture is 1 Corinthians 6, uh, 19 through 20 in the message version. And I'm just going to take a quick second to read it because I don't want to assume anybody's just happened, just happens to be sitting there with your Bible out <laughs> while you're watching us. So I'm just going <laughs> to go ahead and just read it out loud. So it's 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20. And it says, didn't you realize that your body is a sacred place, the place of the Holy Spirit? Don't you see that you can't live however you please, squandering what God paid such a high price for? The physical part of you is not some piece of property belonging to the spiritual part of you. God owns the whole works. So let people see God in and through your body. Powerful. Great scripture. translation. Right. Just such a beautiful, convicting reminder that even what we're putting in our temples, right? Because our temples belong to the Holy Spirit. Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So everything that we are doing, even in our eating, is an example of Christ. So yeah, that was that was just a little bit of the biblical. Um, backing to food and the importance of food and the importance of what we're putting in our bodies. And I'm sure there are people that have more scriptures. And so you please post them. We'd love to see more scriptures. If you have a scripture where God is placed on your heart about food and about eating and what his desire is for that, post it. We'd love to, we'd love to chat about it. So post it in the comments. So when it comes to food, we're going to talk briefly um, the difference between the diet trends and the lifestyle programs. Um, when we're talking about food, when we're talking about the scripture that Tania read over as far as our temple, um, because I don't know that we connect the two being that our temple is something that God desires for us to keep well um, of. And so I think sometimes we think we can do any and everything to our bodies. Um, because we we feel like we are ultimately the ones in control of it. But honestly, um, we should be doing our best to honor God with our temples. So when we um, talk about the difference between diets and lifestyles, right? What's the yeah, trend yeah. that's out, the fads that's out, and then, um, you know, the things that you, you do for a select time frame that's typically not easy to maintain, and then um, on the contrary, those that are your lifestyles, your programs, those supports, things that you can sustain, um, you know, those things is what we want to really look at is how are we able to honor God with our bodies, um, with the food we consume and let it be sustainable. That's that's really key. So um, Tania is going to put in the comment section some of the things that we found are uh, beneficial. And so um when it comes to some people, when we, we talk about um, fads, right? So we know with fads, it's been everything from uh, um, Atkins to keto to, um, you know, a low carb, high carb, all protein, no protein, all vegetables, no vegetables, uh, you know, every far extreme you can possibly think of, right? Um, all junk food, no junk food, right? I've, I've heard it all where it's just like, this is not even, you know, it's more of a joke than it is. Um, any type of a wellness option at this point, um, because your body is going to um, either shut down from it or, again, is not going to be sustainable. So um, that those are far extreme ends. And then you have those that are more sustainable. When we look at options like fasting and um, Tania, you want to give a little insight. I know your church does a Daniel fast every year. We do, um, as do a lot of churches, especially over the past few years. They they start the year off with a Daniel fast. And so what a Daniel fast is, is basically taken from the biblical story of Daniel, where he took the time before he went before the king and he only basically ate as a vegan. So we're talking, you are eating every, nothing that had a face, or came from something that had right. a face. 
Right. And everything is grown, planted, and in its natural form. Doesn't mean you have to eat raw. You can still cook it, you can still steam it, still prepare it. Um, but it is about cleansing away the natural desires that we have that our flesh tends to go to first, right? Before we, um, before we go to God, we tend to want to satisfy our flesh. So it's about taking that time to just deny your flesh, your body desires, so that this way it's only receiving what God originally intended it to receive, because that's actually how Adam and Eve used to eat as well, before sin. They were also vegan. So that's the Daniel Fast. Uh, just put the link in the comments to a website that has a lot of great information about the Daniel Fast. If you've never heard of it, this would be a great place to start. And if you have done it before and it's just been a while or you're ever looking to encourage someone that's ever contemplating going on a fast or they, they've said to you that I feel an urge from God to go on a fast. It's a great, great spiritual fast, really great fast. So there's a website there that can help them get started or even help you get started with that process. And there are other, lots of other great fasts out there. That's not the only one. Like when was saying, lots of other great fasts that are out there. This just happens to be one that I know personally <laughs> has impacted my life and my family's life. And every year, it's a powerful time, a powerful spiritual time. And we just want to say before we go on any further that Wynn and I, we are not doctors. We are not licensed healthcare professionals. So discuss everything with your healthcare provider before you ever go on any fast, before you ever change your diet, you always wanna have that discussion with your doctor. So when you love to cleanse, you I love do. to do a cleanse from time to time. So tell us about the cleanse. Yes, I, I fast as well, but I love a detox. So for me, very key with how toxins build up in the body every day. Um, whether it's from air quality or whether it's from your food that you intake. So you have to be mindful that your body always needs to be in a, a sense of, of cleansing and a detox, especially your liver. Um, and if you're not familiar, your liver is your filter of your body. So if you can imagine if you've never detoxed your body before um, and you know how when you take a, um, a filter out of a air unit of any kind, um, or, you know, just imagine back in the day, remember when you used to empty the vacuum cleaner, right? right. And you would see what that looked like. Um, it's catching all of the impurities in the body. So same concept of what the liver does. So you want to detox, whether it's once a year, um, twice a year. I used to do it quarterly. And, um, and then I started seeing how my body really loved it. And so I started it monthly where I do a monthly detox and I mix it up. Sometimes I'll do it in the midst of intermittent fasting. Um, and sometimes I'll do um, just a straight detox for multiple days. So um, Tania did put in the comment section. One of my favorites that I absolutely love is the 10 day green smoothie cleanse detox. And it's a great book. It gives you all of the recipes so you don't even have to figure out what smoothies to make. Just follow the book. The recipes are there. Um, and um, it's by JJ Smith and she's a nutritionist. So all of the recipes um, are great when it comes to being balanced. You don't have to worry about your blood sugar spiking and things like that. I know sometimes when people make smoothies, yeah. um, it's typically all sugar. <laughs> right. That's a shake. So, you know, um, so yes. smoothie is going to have a vegetable with it. <laughs> it's going to be balanced. OK, so um, and then adding protein if you choose to um, and things like that. So you really want to be mindful of your fiber. And just keeping your system moving um, is really what is key. Detoxing your body, um, having natural movements is really key with your bowels. You want to be regular um, because people don't realize you can die from that. So, um, you know, back colon cancer and, and having issues with your colon and not having healthy bowels is really important. So uh, especially, uh, you know, in um, some of our communities. So we want to make sure that you're healthy inside and out is really, really key. So the detox is great. Can I ask, would you recommend 
that if someone's ever starting on that 10 day cleanse or any type of cleanse or detox for the first time, do they need to stay close to home? Like real talk. I would say start it one or two days at a time and get to know your body. Everyone's body is completely different. So when you're doing any kind of fast or any kind of cleanse, your body is going to um, eliminate at different times. They're going to have different side effects. So be mindful of that, right? And to understand that when you're going through a detox, it may not mean that you're continuously going to the bathroom. Um, a lot of times, some people will get headaches, um, nausea. Um, their skin will break out. It'll have a, a, an, a, an array of side effects, I would say, to detox. And it's your body fighting you because your body doesn't want to detox. It's saying, no, I want to hold on to these toxins, uh, just like a blanket with uh, Linus, right? And so you want it to be clean and you're, it's fighting you. So um, allow for those side effects to pass. Don't give up on it prematurely. Drink tons of water. I would say for me, I typically have my water bottle. Uh, my green water bottle holds 32 ounces and I fill that up two to three times a day. So, um, you know, it's very, very good that you have your body's weight in ounces that you drink that. Um, that's going to help flush toxins out of your body as well. So detox tea, all those things are a great option. Just flush the liver, um, you know, at least a few times a year, especially if you're a heavy meat or sugar consumer. You want to flush your body with the detox. Yeah, that's a great, that's great info. Because yeah. I, I, I would never want to be on the cleanse and my body decide to need to release itself while I'm in the grocery store or somewhere else. So it's just, right. a, question. Right. It's just a question that so many people don't ask, but it's like, hey, let's have the real, let's have the real talk about that. Yeah, no, it totally is. It's, it's more of an ease. Uh, it's not like that liquid that you drink before you go to surgery. Um, mm -hmm. That's that's extreme. That's mm -hmm. not a detox. Yeah. That's a completely different process. Right. So right. a detox is, is natural with your body. Um, and so you may go multiple times in a day. And for someone who's used to only going once or, or twice, yes, it's going to be increased. And that's natural. Um, and for people who are overweight or, or have excess weight in their mid area, we always let them know that you're not overweight, you're over waste, because typically we eat multiple times a day and you typically right. only eliminate once a day. So those other meals are still in your mid area. And that's really key to know um, three cars go in the tunnel, at least three should come out or you have what's called a traffic jam. So that's a funny way to explain um, detox. And if you're not doing that, then you're backed up, honey. And it's OK. Just cleanse. We love you. That's OK. And God forbid you should have cars backed up. No one wants cars backed up. People ask me all the time. They're like, how do you maintain your stomach being flatter? Now, right now, we'll say because of my snack and carb intake, it, it's, it has a little curve to it. But when I get back, no worries, honey, because, again, detox tea in the morning and my smoothies during the day um, and I have a. Um, a liver cleanse that I take with that once a day, two weeks, and my belly is back flat. And that's the key is because everything that's going in is coming right out and it's burning the fat. So um, you want to look at that. And again, I don't do a lot of starches. Um, when I do, they're quality premium starch. So I'll have a, a crab, you know, some cornbread every now and again, but it's going to be premium. I'm not just out here wasting it on potatoes and, and pasta by any right. means, uh, you know, or rice, because all those things add up. So um, you know, have them when you have them. But if you're looking to have more of a cleaner digestion system or summer's coming and you want that belly, then, yeah, your greens is what keep you moving and um, in your, your veggies. So be mindful. Yeah. And for some of us, summer's already here with weather. Yeah. So some it's of us true. are in summer. So I'm not yeah. going to say you're too late if you haven't started by now. But it's not too late. It's not too late. But you you need to you need to expedite. If you live if you living in Texas and you're trying to get that that flat stomach for the summer, yeah, you might want to expedite the process just a little. <laughs> just a little. No worries. And I I definitely do it as a lifestyle. So um, right year round. You know, it's not like you want to be like a bear and you have this. You know, in in the winter time, you want to maintain all year round as much as possible and have your fun. Enjoy it. Food is not about being restrictive. 
Um, right. It's it's about enjoying and loving what you eat. But again, let it be nourishing. Um, I know that I have nourishment during the week, Monday through Friday, and I meal I typically meal prep with my smoothies on Sunday afternoon or Sunday evening. But um, when it comes to weekends, if if I'm going to see family, um, I know, honey, that's eating clean is not it's synonymous with my family. So nope. what that typically means is that I'm going to have comfort food. And so those are my my splurges is with those fun times with family and friends. But when I'm back home, I typically am fairly disciplined. And so that's what you maintain. And uh, but having those fun times is so key. You want to have that because in our culture, food and family, food and and celebrations, they all go to hand, they all in, go hand. hand in hand. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you want to make sure you still have quality time. And um, and I'm I have now understood with myself that I have nourishment when I'm at home and when I'm out with family or friends. It may be digestible, but it very seldom is nourishment. And so I think people have to understand the difference between nourishment and what they eat. That's not nourishment. Right. So there's things that we're eating and consuming. You hear sometimes where they say it's dead calories. Right. It has no nutritional content at all. Um, and so there are foods that have it no content. Good. It just most. Good. Yeah. Most soul food. Good. We cook it so much uh, to the point where it has no nutritional content. So um, that's the thing. Right. We love collard greens, for example, or, or kale. Right. Um, so fresh kale, I eat all the time. Raw kale, I eat all the time. That's perfect at home, maybe in a smoothie or in a salad. But I know when I get with family and they're cooking kale, it's dead. It has no nutritional content. It, Honey, it has turkey with it. It's delicious. Okay, it's in a pot um, and it's great. But does it have nutritional content? It does not. It's, it's, it's pretty dead by that point. It's overcooked. Um, and so, but it is still good. It's delicious, but is it nutritious? <laughs> so learn the difference. Uh, there is a difference. And so, um, and it's okay. Enjoy both. And don't yeah. judge when it comes to food. Let people mm -hmm. live their lives and don't judge. I surely do not. I know people who think I'm crazy with my smoothie journey for it since 2014. And that's okay. So for me to manage from 315 pounds to where I am now, and you know, from there I was a 2830, size 2830, and now I'm a 4'6, I had to just do my own journey. And to know that I had to shed that and now my joints feel so much better. Um, I don't have the back pains. I don't have the aches. Um, it's just so many things that came along with what, you know, for me and my journey. And I go to the gym, but I know that where my nutrition maintains is with my mouth. What I put in my mouth, how much and what time of day is what predominantly, like an iceberg, impacts um, my overall wellness. So, you know, you can never out exercise, um, you know, poor nutrition. So if you go to the gym and you're on a treadmill and you, you know, you just had a Snickers and you know, that's 600 calories, you know, you're on the treadmill for two hours. You probably, probably won't burn all of those <laughs> calories from that one Snickers, uh, which yeah. means, yeah. Yeah. If you really are looking at wellness, it's, it's great to firm up and it's great to build muscle. Um, but it, totally comes with, with nutrition. So right. and my as I, soapbox. As I always love to tell people, it's not about being thin. It's about being no. healthy because there's a lot of thin people out here that aren't healthy. True. So like Wynn said, it's just about giving your body what it needs, period. And what my body may need may be completely different from what Wynn's body needs or anybody else's. So it's about one of course, you know, take it to God, ask him, you yeah. know, God, how should I be eating? How should I be eating for me? You know, right. how should I be eating? How should I be taking care of this temple that you've given me? Because reality of it is, if we don't take care of our bodies, y'all, then death is inevitable. Death is inevitable anyway, but right. you're really trying to cut yourself short if you don't care for your body. And you have to listen. That's the key. Listen to your body. Uh, when people talk about food allergies, okay, so there are true food allergies. And yeah. then there's times when you just don't listen to your body, right? So, um, and God's pretty clear. Like for me, uh, 
being a, a vegan, vegetarian, pescatarian, and then a flexitarian, you know, when you come back on to meat, you tend to overdo things sometimes. And for me, I started to overdo chicken. I was loving it. You know, it was like, when I'm going to have chicken on those times when I was having cheat days, I would go for a fried chicken wing. And so I started to have more reaction in my digestion from chicken. And God was so clear to me. He was like, chicken's not for your body. You have it. You love it. But I can tell you, my body digests it differently than any other meat that I consume. And then in the last month, the kicker, Tania, that you know I love that has now shifted within my body has been peanuts. And you know how much I love peanut butter. Oh, my God. I was peanut hoping butter. you were going to say you had to give up guacamole. That's what I was hoping you were going to say. <laughs> God forbid. God, just take. if you have to take me out of here, if you take me off of avocados, I'm telling you, it would be... I, <laughs> Take me, you know, take me now. Um, oh, my goodness. I love avocados. So, but no, seriously. So I noticed in the last two weeks, I have not had peanuts, um, nor peanut butter or any derivative of a peanut. And I can tell the difference. I was starting mm -hmm. to get like the poofy, the swollen stomach poofiness from having peanuts daily or peanut butter with apples and carrots. And I was like, I don't like how I feel. Like, you know what I mean? And yeah. uh, God was like, it's yeah. the peanuts. You've overdone it. I was like. Yeah, me adding the joke is because I add peanuts to smooth peanut butter. So it was a complete overdose with that because crunchy peanut butter sometimes is too thick and it doesn't stir well. So I was just excessive. Thank you, Marcy, with the avocado. Thank you. I am so glad I am not the only person who has an avocado addiction. I have avocado socks, avocado pajamas, um, avocado throw blankets. My friends know I love avocados, so they give me the best gifts with avocados on them. But um, it is a fat. You can overdo it. Um, sometimes we do, but don't judge. Uh, just in moderation, everything in moderation. But avocados are the best. And some people, you know, they argue between it being a fruit and a vegetable. I could really care less of which category it falls in as long as I could have it. So whichever. You know what category it falls in? Trash. That's what I'm going to say. I can't it falls you. in the trash category. Got trash. a sidebar over here. It she's, is. she's agreeing with you. I, I, I know. It is no. It is just no, no. It, it is all thumbs up, Marcy. No. Thank you for the no. feedback and for those out there in our virtual <laughs> land who love avocados and know the nutritional benefits. They are amazing. Yes. And for those of you that are smarter to know that it's disgusting. <laughs> Uh, and even adding guacamole, guacam putting it in guacamole, anything of the sort is just a no. It no, no, no. Thank no. you, Misty. I feel no. like I, I, you and I. I look, I look at guacamole, and it looks like dinosaur dung to me. It looks like something that came out of the backside of a dinosaur. That is what <laughs> it looks like to me. And oh, tastes like it's just so pointless. Just so pointless. It is but, delicious. But, but I digress. <laughs> Thank you. On Thank the you. guac. On the guac. Um. I love making homemade guacamole. So, um, and you can put them in your smoothies as a fat if you choose to. Um, it gives it a great smooth flavor. So, um, yeah, right? She's hilarious. Tania is the vegetarian who loves nothing, nothing vegetarian. That's okay? not she true. Is, That's not true. She is the anti-vegetarian vegetarian is what she is. She's like the vegetarian's opposite. Anything a vegetarian likes, she's like, no, nope, 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 nope. Hey, what about nope? Don't nope. blame me because if Ann didn't cook it, I wasn't exposed to it. <laughs> we weren't exposed to avocados as a kid. Think no, we that. weren't. And I tried it and I was just like, what is this disgustingness that everybody is raving about? There is just the best. nasty and pasty and just serves no no value. Pasty. pasty, I said it. It's pasty. It depends on how it's what it's made with and how it's blended. Don't care. It looks okay. like something that came out of a dinosaur. You will not change my mind on it whatsoever. That is absolutely hilarious. Well, we will leave your mind where it is on on avocado, as you say. So, you know, speaking of foods and like when was saying, you know, good, healthy foods, the FDA uh, a couple of years ago now, I think almost three years ago now, updated yeah. all of the food labeling on packaging, you guys. So 
It's so important that even when you're doing your grocery shopping, that is a great place to start, is before you throw it in the basket, take the time and look at that label. Um, look at all those extra fats that are in there and the added sugars, all that information that is now available to us on the label, that is life changing. You know, they are giving us the consumer the power to decide, okay, do I really still want to eat this now that I know what all is in it? So um, we're going to post a link in the comments to the FDA website where you can read up about all the new, the new nutrition label guidelines that's out there. And for those of us that have kiddos, you know, just even taking the time to even look to see, okay, what are, what am I really feeding my child? Absolutely. What all, what all does this label really say? Am I feeding my child? Yeah. And, Being and mindful of artificial colors, artificial flavors, um, I love that they have become more transparent with the GMO, right? The genetically yes. modified flavors. Um, yeah. And and to be honest, we know, right? Like there is no such thing as a cotton candy flavor or as a uh, whatever flavor, right? Whatever these bizarre that we love. Cotton candy but, grapes. Like it's okay to just know that they're created in a laboratory and you, you know, if you like it, you like it, you know, but it's nice to be aware right? That this is something that is genetically modified, or if it's something that um, is way over your intake that you're supposed to have. Like I love now on the new labels that they have the one column for the buy the cup on like the bags of whatever yes. you're going to buy, right? Mm -hmm. And then it just says entire bag, right? So it gives you, because they know <laughs> you're going to eat the whole bag. So I love that they, they don't even make you do the math anymore, right? Because normally you would be like, well, how many servings is a whole, you know, if it's three cups and how many cups is in this bag? So now it just says one serving, entire bag. Because let's just be real, America. You're eating the whole bag. So why even sit there and do the math on that left column is irrelevant. Read the right column because you know you're going to eat that whole bag. So um, I love the transparency now with the labels from the FDA and um, being aware of what you're putting in your body. And if you choose to eat it all, at least you are aware of what it is. I mean, exactly. If, yeah. if I choose to eat the whole bag of Doritos, at least I am fully aware of the sodium count that is going into my body. You know? And then we no longer have the excuse of we don't know or we didn't know. So just a little bit of lovely uh, ideas and links for you guys. If you have a favorite um, lifestyle that you've been on, whether it's keto or whatever, post it in the comments. We'd love to hear what you guys have been doing. Um, we are, like Wen said, she's a flexitarian sometimes, sometimes vegetarian, sometimes vegan, sometimes pescatarian. I am 99% of the time pescatarian. So, um, and that has served our, that has served our bodies well, right? Because right. we're doing what is best for us. So we're not pushing it on anybody today or anybody else that even watches this after today. This is just what we're doing. Um, and as always, like we said at the top of this segment, make sure you talk to your healthcare providers. Very much. Especially important. if you're thinking about changing your eating habits in any way, right? Just find out find out even from wisdom because God gave those doctors wisdom for a reason. So find out from them what would be, what would be best for you and your body in staying healthy. So uh, we got, <laughs> we have, we're going to take a moment here just to discuss uh, just the books and things that God has us doing in this season. So when you want to share with everyone all the awesome things that God has put on your plate in this season. Absolutely. So um, in addition to this show with you and um, in this ministry that we're doing along with the shared books, um, I have a book that will be out when God deems it to be released called Release. And it's a 20 year um, divinely directed memoir that goes over the last 20 years of my life 
It encompasses um, love, life, lessons, forgiveness, grace. And um, it's a great workbook that just walks you through um, 20 different lessons and messages. And it has some great information. And it's going to be a great resource for people when it's released. I'm really excited about it. And um, in addition to that, we do every first Friday of the month. So I believe that's April 2nd. That is yeah. Cozy Conversations. And that is a great virtual experience for women from 6 to 8 p.m. Um, and that is each Eastern time. And that's going to be um, April 1st is Friday. No, this is the second. Yep. So it's the second. Um, and that is um, every month. It's going to be the first Saturday, first Friday, and it's going to be at 6 p.m. So just join us. You can just look it up. Um, Tania can put it in the comments. It's also been in the comments for the last couple of shows. But it's Cozy Conversations, first Friday of every month. And it's women's topics. It's a sacred space for women and allowing them to come together and to just share their hearts and for us to uplift each other. Um, the topic for March for Women's History Month was women's worth and value. So often women undervalue themselves. So often they feel that they have to find their worth and value in a man. Yeah. Right. Or they allow or they 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 say, you know, basically if they're in a relationship or not or from even their father. Right. All of those male figures in, in their lives have determined their worth and their value. And so it was great for us to really show um, the wonderful graphics that we did that were created um, that talks about how women were or a woman is God's final masterpiece. Right. Um, he created the earth. He created Adam. And then from there, it was the grand finale was a woman. And so yeah. you have to understand, right, that literally we were the encore. And when you understand that you are God's grand finale, you stop giving people discounts. You stop undervaluing yourself and you start to understand the value and the worth that you have. And that God has said you are beautifully and wonderfully made. And so that was the topic for March. For April, the topic is going to be self-love and mental health and how those two things tie together. So I'm pretty excited about that. So join us for Cozy Conversations, all the ladies. And uh, Latinia has put the, the link to the event in the comments. And um, go ahead and register via Zoom so that you can get the information and spread the word. All are invited. We have people from all over the country um, that were on. So it was a lot of fun. Right. Because the beauty of us still pandemicking is that we yeah. all have the opportunity to attend events all over the world right now, right? Via virtual. And I know there's so many that say, but I spend all day on the computer. I spend all day my eyes in a Zoom, you know, or in a video chat. And we so get it. We get it, guys. We get it. But this would be a time that you would sew into yourself. So just see it as a, as a self-investment, those um those cozy conversation segments. So that is awesome. Um, anything else you want to share, Wynn? Um, we're also uh, going to be relaunching Testimony Tuesdays. That was something that God had given uh, us to walk out. And uh, so that's going to be done um, on, on another platform because I think what we have right now, those technical capabilities, we still have to flush out. Um, but that will be when that's back up and running, that will be on Tuesdays following this show, 830 Eastern. And um, but we'll keep you posted on this show and also on the Testimony Tuesdays Facebook page and group when that will be back up and running. We just have to really do some more research on what the best platform will be for everyone to call in or video in um, to give their testimonies. And uh, so we want to be able to do that in the best way that's easier for everyone with the technology wise. But those are the three things that I'm focusing on right now. Awesome. So uh, for me, in addition to this <laughs> amazing talk show time, uh, Wynn and I are also doing a book study together that takes place on Wednesdays right now. And we are almost, almost two thirds through the book, the book we are reading is called Redeeming Love. If you're not familiar with it, amazing book by an author named Francine Rivers. Um, cover looks like this, should you decide to look it up on Amazon or anywhere else books are sold. Um, and it's the, um, it's a fictional 
retelling of the book of Hosea in the Bible, where God told Hosea to go and marry a prostitute. And so this author has beautifully written it in fiction form. It takes place in about the 1800s. And uh, it's just a beautiful retelling of how much God loves us, how much he pursues us, thankfully, and never stops. And how big his arms are. And they're full of so much grace and so much love and so much mercy. So it's a great book. If anybody's looking out there, wondering um, what would be something great to read in this season, we would recommend that book. So that's one thing that I've been doing. Also, I have my own website. God did bless me to also write my own book. It is called Faith That Goes the Distance, A Journey of Walking on Water with God. So it's a memoir of my family's journey from the East Coast here to Texas and doing that in a literal Abraham and Sarah move from the Bible where God said, pick up, it's time to go. And so that is exactly what we did. <laughs> and in literally 90 days, we did a faith move of sold a home, bought a home, and moved. <laughs> and the rest is truly history and just how God used us in this new season here, how he grew us, how he stretched us in our faith. And uh, I'm looking forward to when that drops. And of course, once our books do, both Win and mine, we'll be sure to let you guys know, to let the followers and listeners of this awesome talk show, we'll be sure to post that to let you guys know. So I also have been, have begun a journey of writing devotionals. So I do have a website, it's tiniaeasterling.com, and there you can go and check out the devotional the one devotional that I've written just thus far, and we'll be posting a new one soon, but definitely go to that website and subscribe. And that way it'll let you know as soon as I get the opportunity to post the next one when that drops. So that is what uh, I have been doing in this season. That is what God has put on my plate when ever growing. I'm pretty excited about these devotionals. And then obviously when our books come out, please, as she said, follow us. We're looking to have the books when they do come out, they will be companions. Yeah. You'll want to, you'll want to read them together. Um, because, um, we talk about very often how God has us at the intersection of faith and forgiveness and they are interchangeable. They're, they're not separate. We really see that now. So, um, definitely just stay connected with us and hopefully soon. Um, you'll be able to hear the release information, right? <laughs> Soon. All in God's time. Soon. Always. Always. <laughs> so we're going to transition now into just talking about food and how we were talking earlier about some of our favorite foods. And we didn't talk about the foods that we don't like. So I shared about guacamole. I was honest in my struggle <laughs> with the dislike of guacamole. <laughs> right. <laughs> that is just one food. Do you have a food that you don't like? Yeah, I would say if I had a food that I don't care for, it would be coleslaw. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm not really a big fan of mayonnaise to begin with. Um, and uh, we'll talk about that in the next segment of who made what. But um, definitely um, it would be coleslaw. I think it's just more so the liquid aspect, the broth of mayonnaise broth <laughs> with these crunchy vegetables. Broth. Uh, not a fan of. That's what it reminds me of. It's like mayonnaise gravy is what it reminds me. Don't get coleslaw mm. when it's warm. You know when coleslaw has mm. sat out sometimes, but you know yeah. what I'm talking about, right? Oh, mm. my goodness. So yeah, that's no, no. No. And I have a funny story also. My mother was an elementary school teacher before she went into the federal government. And I was in... Um, preschool or it was more, yeah, it was like pre-K, I would guess. Um, and so pre-K was in a different building than the main elementary school at the time. And so they served us as four-year-olds. They wanted to serve us coleslaw, right? Um, and the four-year-old me 
kindly let the, the cafeteria lady know that I did not want coleslaw. And so she was adamant that she wanted to serve the four-year-old me coleslaw. And I was like, no, thank you. Right. But not having it. So uh, they went across the street and got my mother and brought her across the street. Over and sure enough, oh, Over because I refused to eat. Oh, I was refusing to eat. So, you know, back then, you know, it's a different level of parenting nowadays, you guys, than what we have right now. I'm going to just leave it right. at that. So when, you're, when your child at four is refusing to eat and the parent is across the street as an instructor, as a teacher, um, yeah, she came across the street because she wanted to see what it was that was going on. And I was like, they're they're trying to serve me coleslaw, and I don't I don't like it. I mean, I was like, mommy, I don't I don't like the coleslaw. And so she told the you know the, the the teacher, she's like, it's okay, you know, she'll eat everything else, right? Which I did not have a problem with anything else they were going to serve me, but it was just coleslaw. So um, that was a hard pass. So um, I'm not sure who makes the preschool menus up in the United States of America, but I do want to let them know. I remember years ago. I remember when Maddie was in preschool and they wanted to serve four year olds hot tuna remember that yes. and, and maddie wouldn't eat it and mm -hmm. uh and and they called you and said she won't eat right and we're thinking who is serving four-year-olds these adult dishes i mean who right. wants hot tuna a tuna melt at four years old it's just too much going on so i digress but it is and who wants to clean up behind four-year-olds that are eating hot tuna let me just put that out there on no their way. stomachs is that who wants coleslaw on a four-year-old stomach? I mean, it's just not cool. So, uh, yeah, do better, cafeteria workers. Give us more solid four-year-old foods. Uh, fried chicken and mac and cheese is what James has said. I mean, yeah. that's that's those are solids, right? But not mayonnaise soup. No. You know, that's no. nasty. Can't go wrong with the Chick-fil-A menu. That basically just can't. Can't yeah. go so, wrong. That's the only thing that I think that I do not eat. Um, at this juncture and has been consistent with it since I was born. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. No pork products. I just can't digest uh, them. No. So that's, but that's not that I don't, that I don't no. care for them. My body right. just doesn't digest pork like most people's body does. Right. I used right. to back in the day, love a pork chop bunny to the point where mm -hmm. I actually uh, would carry the pork chop bone in my pocket the next day and just have, the seasoning, you just suck on the seasoning. Don't judge <laughs> virtual world. But my mother's pork chops were just that good back in the day that I would carry the bone with me for a second day. So I did consume pork as well as, um, you know, in our area, we stuffed ham was what was big for our region. Um, and so I did enjoy that as well. But the body just decided it just couldn't handle it. And so, yeah, since I was young, that's just been something I haven't been able to maintain. So, yeah, no pork. Same here. Same here. I can cook. I can cook you a mean pork chop. Right. Uh, but won't eat it anymore. Won't eat it anymore. So I got questions. This is a fun part of our segment, y'all, <laughs> where we love to just talk about, okay, so let's have a real moment here. So the question is on the <laughs> I got questions segment. Is, <laughs> Do you, when you go to family functions, when you go to friends' houses, and obviously we're talking pre-COVID, right? Over right. the years, over the years, do you ever, whether internally or out loud, ask somebody, well, who made the, <laughs> and Absolutely. whatever that food item is that's, that's on question on the table? 100%. So for me, Always, I need to know who made the potato salad. If I see it, absolutely, you I need agree. to know who made it. I need to know who made it. Don't, don't, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. am I am I going to be bougie and picky about it? Oh, you oh, best absolutely. believe it. You best better believe it. Because if it's not your gift, yes, and yes, there is a gifting. There is a ministry for potato salad. It's very true. It's very true. We're we're in our forties, and I will tell you that for me. Um, I don't believe, now you can take it for grain of salt as you want, but when does not believe um, someone in their early 40s that does not have jiggly arm fat can make good potato salad? Prove me wrong. Okay, you want to send it into the show. If you're in your 30s and you make bomb potato salad, prove us wrong. But um, my opinion is if you're, 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 you're not at least, at least you, you don't have at least one grandchild 
or eligible to have one grandchild, right. jiggly arm fat, uh, and have been making it for years. And it's what you are known for. As Tania said, it is your ministry gift, is mm. what people ask you to make, even to an event that you don't attend. You make it for <laughs> other people. That's right. when we know it's your ministry. Right. Um, so if you don't fall into that category, it's okay. We, we love you, but it's not your gift. Don't bring it to potlucks anymore. Okay, find something else that is your gift. So the I got questions, the humor part of this segment um, is we want to know when I get to a, a cookout, a barbecue, a potluck, a family function of any kind. Um, I want to know who made what. Uh, I do not keep it to myself, um, Tania. Um, I. Um, I, I want to know who made the chicken, who made the macaroni and cheese, who made the potato salad. Um, you know, these are all very, very important questions. Before I even ask you how you are doing, I definitely want to know who made what. So is there anyone else out there that is as bougie as us when it comes to foods who don't eat just everyone's? No, we just don't. I'd and rather go without. Bougie and willing to admit it. Because I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. We are not ashamed to ask the question. Yeah. Of who made what, you know, and and it's OK. It's OK that everybody operates in their lane and operates in their gifting. Especially when it comes to food. Yeah. If you know it's not your gifting, boo, put the spoon down. Yeah. We don't want to have... Um you learning new recipes. We want you to learn new recipes, but that's for you at home. Uh, do not bring them to the gathering of any kind. Uh, office potluck people. Let's just have a conversation. Okay. Oh so uh, we are not eating things. If it does not smell right, look right. Um, if you have cats at your house, um, it's a pretty good chance that we're not eating what you're bringing. So there, there is a list of criteria culturally of what we're going to eat and what we're not. Um, the, you know, your level of sanitation, pretty critical on what we consume and what we know you're good, you know, at cooking. So, you know, yeah. yeah. Fried chicken, cornbread. I have all those questions. Who made them? Yeah. Who made the cornbread? And then we have brand, you know, we're, we're some of us, if you are, if you're cooking, right. And we know certain brands, if you're not going to make it from scratch, um, then there's certain brands that we're even biased on. So it's not right. just who made it, but what did you make it with? Right. So um, I know there's layers to this thing, but um, you got to ask the questions because here's the kicker. You do not want to put something in your mouth with a taste and an expectation and then. And it not be met. That expectation not no. even close to being. And it throws off your whole night, sometimes your whole week, because you, you have that failed food expectation. I know I'm not the only one out there. So mm -hmm. I'd rather just go with, rather just go without, right? Uh, just give me, just, I'll just go without versus being that disappointed, failed expectation. And then also it just, it can turn your stomach, honestly, if it's not done well, um, right. you know, and could get you sick. So you just gotta stay with what you know. Don't get out here and exploring like Dora the Explorer when it comes to your tummy. Do not, okay? Right. Right. It's not the time. <laughs> and that's real because because I do I do have the psychological default yeah. of judging all potato salad up against Francis's potato salad. You know How about it? About when I say yes. Francis. Or Gilbert also, right? Oh right. my gosh, yes. yes. Francis yes. or Gilbert. Yes. yes. Shout out to both of you if you ever get to see these that's episodes. It. But you that's have ruined my, my aunt, my auntie Marie the same way, right? Like we know. But speaking of potato salad, I literally over the years have had some experiences with some family or friends visiting their family. <laughs> are we pausing for effect or are we pausing because we're looking for the right word? <laughs> Help me, Lord. Hold on. <laughs> I'm on vacation, you guys, so you get the red cup. So um, where the potato salad was warm now on purpose let me finish i'm not here to judge anyone's culture brief is that okay i'm not here to judge anyone's upbringing um family recipes <laughs> legacy your ancestors i'm not here to judge any of those things so i'm putting all those things as a as a, as a caveat you know i'm not here to disrespect your ancestors 
However, when you tell me that your family has made a Southern family dinner, you invite me over and there is potato salad. Now, now mind you, I've already said to you, I have a love hate relationship with mayonnaise as it is. Okay. So when I get there and the potato salad that you have been swearing by, right? You've been talking this thing up like great game. Okay. And they put it on my plate and not only does it run, but it touches my other foods. Oh, I have no. to, at this point, hold my whole face together, okay? Mm -hmm. Because I'm mortified that the juices of your potato salad has run into my chicken and gotten my chicken wet, okay? So now I'm trying to hold myself together. But you swear this is bomb potato salad that your family member makes, so I try it. Because Good again, I always don't have juice. Good I'm potato salad don't have running juice. First of all, a good potato salad should be put in the refrigerator and it should be firm. Always. Number one, texture Always. and chilled, okay? Refrigerated. <laughs> However, this was never refrigerated. It was blended and it was served warm. So to me, this was mashed potatoes unmashed, okay? The temp was just that warm. And mm. I sat there with all of the grace I could girdle in myself to eat this potato salad and just smile as if it was as delicious as I was promised it was going to be. Oh my and I'm God. asking God, was this a precursor <laughs> to some things? And I, I sh probably should have saw that as one of the flags as a precursor to some things. Y'all, unless it's your culture, because I do know that there are some cultures in the South uh, down by New Orleans that has a recipe of gumbo and warm potato salad on the gumbo. Now, yeah. that's not my deal. I love gumbo, yeah. but you will never catch me put warm potato salad in the same bowl on top of some gumbo. But I, I will never disrespect. I don't I even thank you. That is, that is very true. But it, their ancestors, again, this is how they culturally eat certain foods. So we can't knock that, right? Because we eat certain things. Like people have never heard of stuff ham or like you put greens and ham together, mm -hmm. right? And mustard seeds. And we're like, yeah, it's delicious. So every region has their thing. Um, right. But uh, I would just say to get off of my soapbox, um, don't talk up foods if they don't come strong. But again, that was what they had known. Right. That was their only perspective for great potato salad. Um, I tried it once. Um, I was disgusted, but you wouldn't have known because I always keep a loving smile. That's what your mother taught you. Right. Always smile and say thank you because you have manners. Uh, and it's called emotional intelligence on how you handle certain things. And then later on. You handle that appropriately. Now, will I have it a second time? I, I will not. I will just let you know, you know, thank you. No, thank you. It looks good, but I just, I can't do potatoes that are hot with mayonnaise today on my mm. stomach. With a smile, just decline. Uh, so if anyone has a um, hot potato salad recipe, um, don't post it in the comments. Because no. we're not here for it. We are East no. Coasters uh, and we like refrigerated, firm, solid, chilled, yeah. With deviled eggs on it or not, okay. Yeah. We're we love you, but no, please don't. Don't do it. it. Don't do it because we are not. <laughs> you, yeah, we want to give you love, and we can't with hot <laughs> potato salad. Um, nope. But so, Tania, have you had anything that has a food that was promising that when you tried it, you were just devastated? Honestly, people's mac and cheese. There's that. Once again, you know me, I'm a connoisseur of mac and cheese. This. So, yes, yes. So Not enough been, cheese. It has um, been before me where it was yeah. mostly pasta Ooh. and very little cheese. Mm -hmm. um, and, mm -hmm. you know, I tried one little spoonful because it, it was at a potluck. You know, it was an office, one of those office potlucks back in the day. So, <laughs> you know, I tried one little spoonful because the person that made it was like standing right next to me and was like, oh, you need to try it. You need to try it. <laughs> and I'm standing there looking at it like, did you forget the cheese? I don't understand. Like, girl, that was just Mac. It was. It was just straight Mac. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, <laughs> I, took, I took one bite you know, and they were like, oh, how was it? Wasn't it so good? And I was like, it was different. It was unique. 
which sometimes has to be my go-to word because what exactly. I want to say is trash. <laughs> it was trash. What? Get it out of here. It was it trash. Was, <laughs> it was unique. It was unique, you know. You know, and, and then I share and here's what I'm used to in, mm -hmm. in my mac and cheese, you know. Cheese in my mac. Almost more cheese than mac. <laughs> it's the truth. <laughs> so well, it typically is. I mean, when you think about mac and cheese, right? Um, a good mac and cheese, I'm going to be honest. Now, if any of you are lactose intolerant, you might want to look for oh, an alternative. Yeah. Um, but dairy-free mac and cheese. I have had great vegan mac and cheese, so I can't knock that. So there are some great vegan mac and cheese. But traditional dairy mac and cheese, the number of pounds of cheese is sometimes double the amount of pasta. That's a good right. rule of thumb. So right. if you're going to go with three to four pounds of noodles, then you're typically going with seven to eight pounds of cheese. And I know if you think about how much cheese that is, right? Yeah, we talked about this earlier, right? <laughs> yeah, you, you look at, you're looking at a guaranteed backup on the expressway. I mean, but that's why you have the holiday foods, right? In the fall, where you get that density and then you spring cleanse in the spring. Everything seasonally has a purpose. So you eat the density in the fall and you spring, right? And in the and and cleanse that out more in your spring months. But it's got to have that ratio of of cheese. If you are putting in sprinkling a little bit, that's not that's not oh mac God. and cheese. I don't right. know what you call that. Uh, and to Food Network, let me just say something if any Food Network oh. execs are watching this. If you put another vegetable in a mac and cheese, we're we're going to uh, we're going to boycott you. Okay, it's um, not mac and cheese. Then it's a fish casserole. casserole. It's, yeah, it's a casserole. It's a so um, stop calling it macaroni and cheese. Baked macaroni and cheese is truly macaroni, dairy. Uh, you got to have some cream, right? And right. cheese. There's got to be butter and dairy, cream and cheese. But it does not have mixed vegetables, y'all. Uh, mm -hmm. We are not casseroling. We only make exceptions with proteins added to the mac and cheese, lobster, crab, shrimp, um, mm -hmm. some kind of a seafood protein. But when mm -hmm. you are adding in mixed vegetables, that is not baked mac and cheese. Again, that is a casserole. Uh, mm -hmm. And you will uh, be uninvited to all future events if you uh, attempt to bring that. Um, so, no. Right. Please don't. It's not the same. <laughs> Spare it's, yourself the embarrassment. And speaking of casserole, my question is always, because I'm only going to eat it from two people anyway. Who made the tuna casserole? Who Does anybody else tuna love tuna casserole? casserole? Oh mm. my gosh. Yeah. That's yeah. the only way you get me to eat warm tuna. It's the only way. I mean, warm tuna. tuna. That's it. <laughs> That's it. And somebody better put it in a casserole with some noodles and some cheese That's and it. a can of cream and chicken soup. <laughs> Right. And yes, I know the recipe for y'all looking at me. Yes, I know the recipe. My mother will mix cream of cream of mushroom and cream of chicken. Mine is um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's yeah. got to have these bases. If they do not, um, just don't make them. Now, I can say I love people who try new things, but food staples, um, they're comfort foods. They are legacy levers. Um and I said that correct, legacy leavers. Like we literally, our family has passed on recipes. Right. Um, when you want to try new things, perfectly fine. Try them at home. Don't bring them to the functions. Um, mm -hmm. Because if people are used to having something a certain way, um, it's just going to cause content in the family. So just, just uh, you know, maybe bring a little side, you know, container. Let people sample, right? But if it's if it's something that was passed on from generation to generation as a recipe, honor that family member keeping it, you know, in its original form as much as possible. Yeah, and and I don't want to have to offend you when I ask. Right. Wow. Well, who made that? Correct. <laughs> or what is this supposed to be? Right. We I never mean, want to have a game of Clue at the dinner table. No. No. It's never no. good. Then, then we're going for a straight Daniel fast at that moment. I'm like, what vegetables you got in your in your fridge? <laughs> let me get, let me just fix the salad. I'm just gonna have a salad. Absolutely we're good with the salad and a roll, salad and a biscuit. We are good. <laughs> yeah, I will tell you that as a realtor, food is so critical to us. Uh, realtors are pretty bougie when it comes to food. So 
Um, if you want an open house and you want a good crowd there, this is obviously pre-COVID or as we say, BC before Corona, right? Um, when you wanted a good crowd of realtors, it was catered. Um, if you did not want a good turnout at your house, well, you didn't have a good menu for your open house because we weren't coming. OK, so it was truly based off of the food and alcohol that was being served or whether or not realtors and how many came through. Now, you knew we knew if certain people were catering the open house. Oh, honey, it looked like a funeral processional. There was enough cars coming through, coming down that street with lights on. Oh you, just, you just thought somebody died and we was visiting the house, okay? <laughs> that is how many realtors were packed in some of these open houses, especially if they were seafood based or if we knew a couple of uh, folks that were catering and it was gonna be uh, you know, crab cakes or a certain type of chicken or a certain type of dish, um, then you would get the crowd. That's how impactful food is in our culture um, where we talk about um, you know, really important things over food. We have all of our celebrations typically right from birth to death <laughs> to ending with yeah. a meal right like you are being birthed with a meal right and you die like we can't sending even you home and having a meal on your behalf i'm just saying like even after you are dead and in the grave or they have burnt you and spread your ashes we are having a repast and we are eating right. in your honor like that's how culturally food is so impactful to us so um and i can say i've i don't know about you but I can honestly say I've never had a bad repast meal. Have you ever had a bad repast meal? Oh no, oh no, because the only people that are being asked to cook, See? To cook at a That's repast it. are That's the people it. that it is their ministry. Absolutely. So you only got you only, you know you only got Miss Bertha making the potato salad, and you only <laughs> got you know yes. Aunt. Aunt Shirley making, you know, the mac and that's, cheese. It's like that's it. That's it. Know. I've never had a bad repast meal. No, if well, anyone else, give us your what comments. What you need people to do is let this be your life. Like yes. at all times. Like if it's your, it, like Ben said, if it's your specialty, mm -hmm. then that's all you make. When when the sheet gets passed around or the email goes out, or what can you bring? Don't get brand new. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No baby. No, just make, just make what you Stick know. To what you know, you can do, and that's it. And trust me, it'll be good because you you have perfected it. You have mastered it. That's I it. Do a mean lemon pound cake. I love to bake. That's it. Love to bake. Well, bake would rather bake than cook. Actually, like if I could, if we, if my family <laughs> could survive off of baking, right. and nobody need to roll us out of this house. I would be baking at all times for every meal. And your pound cake is phenomenal, right? So stick with what you know. And and right. if you've had, uh, we'd love to hear if you have had any good or bad experiences, but tell us if you've had any bad repast food. And for anyone who culturally doesn't know what we mean when we say that, a repast is a meal that happens after a burial or a funeral service. That's what a repast is. Just to give a little history there because we can't assume everybody knows what that means. Absolutely. So, um, a repast is, is the meal that's following uh, the uh, the celebration of life um, service of someone that's passed away or the memorial service. Um, and typically they gather to eat and family get to see each other for the first time in months or years. And whoever is providing the food is typically, you know, versions of big mamas or aunties. And um, or it is so, delicious. Or so you hope. Yes. Or yes. so you hope. <laughs> very much. Very much. Yes. Yes. So uh, we'd love to hear any feedback, you know, post in the comments. If you have any questions about today, any comments about today, we'd love to hear what your favorite foods are, the foods you can't stand. Um, and if it's guacamole, you have a friend. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Don't go down that rabbit hole with Tania at all. <laughs> at all. She loves to bake pound cake. Um, I like to every now and again, and I preface that, I like she's she's yelling lasagna. Now I haven't baked the kids lasagna yes. uh in <laughs> years because here's how cooking works. If you are a good cook, you eat what you cook. Now right. take that opinion however you like to say it. But because I know I was eating clean, I typically didn't bake lasagna. But lasagna was one of the things that I was very good at. Um, and I haven't baked in a while. No, um, you haven't. Because again, watching what I'm eating. Um, and grandma, my grandma, our grandma Sarah, uh, taught me how to bake. And so I love baking her brownies with nuts. 
Again, I try to do them sparingly, so I call them birthday brownies because then again, I'm not baking them continuously. And right. then, of course, I'd have to eat them. So, um, so I do, you know, selectively do birthday brownies with with walnuts and take them to people just as a gift of care and love. Um, but um, I try to be mindful with that. And um, but people don't like when I when you know if I want to bring them salad, they they want they want the brownies. They don't want. Same. They want the cake. They want yeah. the cake. It's like, they don't want I can food. make, I can make, and they're like, no, 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 just, just the cake. Just bring the lemon, just bring the lemon pound cake. That's all you need. Right. To they want, they want the comfort. They don't want anything clean. Um, right. This is that she can't stand boiled okra. Right. So I kind of, I like fried okra, Misty. So I kind of agree with you. If you're going to have okra, it's about a texture too with that flavor. Um, so it depends on who's cooking it. Again, who made the okra? Mm -hmm. And personally, okra is on my nope list. So it's a vegetable. Tania is not eating it. It's green. It's a green vegetable. You are she so is a because well, there are vegetables that I love. You're you have a birthday ball. coming up, Misty. Misty says I have a birthday coming up. Uh, Misty, do you want birthday brownies? Because I love your mask that you made. I'm here at the beach, and I have your mask that I'm wearing, the one that has all yes. the sayings on it. So thank you. Shout out to Misty for making me some masks. So Misty, I may have to mail you uh, from from the East Coast over to Austin some birthday brownies, um, or or maybe I'll send them to Tania and she can then disperse them to you, uh, and hopefully you get some once. They I get was about that, to say that my conduit. Fee might, my fee might be fifty percent. So <laughs> Misty, I'm sorry in advance if you get a half a pan of brownies that might have some nuts missing. <laughs> That's not how they were made. I apologize in advance. Um, but we'll think, we'll talk about it. She said, wouldn't let them go. Absolutely. Absolutely not. Good yes. deal. Yes. Thank so, you. <laughs> so even after uh, this ends, the airtime ends today, still feel free to post it, post your feedback in the comments. We'd love to hear about your favorite foods, the foods you can't stand, what some of your favorite snacks are and such, you know, um, and even the ways that God has shown you how to care for his temple. We'd love to hear that too, uh, because everybody is always uh, on, the, on the lookout. At least we are always on the lookout for ways and, that God and is. And tell us, what you did from last week is a follow-up, right? So we were joking yeah. from last week, which was on finance and what you did with your uh, refund or, or what you plan to do with your refund or stimulus check. Uh, and so uh, the joke was, you know, that we eat it, which is what the data was showing. Poor census data shows that, you know, 60% of Americans eat their surplus funds. Not saying that they're wrong, but that's what data has shown the uh, the American census counters. Um, and so we have that joke. So follow up from last week. I did have crab legs yesterday. I sent to the other picture. Uh, but mind you, I, I gave over and above in my tithe and offering. I put some in savings. I bought the red shoes that I promised you last week that I would buy and crab legs. So I honored everything from last Tuesday, guys. So I'm, I'm pretty set and, and still have some in the bank. So yeah. 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 Eat it up. And we celebrated yes. our anniversary. And so we did also do seafood as well, uh, but exactly. not crab legs. no crab legs here in Texas. No. Aww. Um. <laughs> I had some in your honor. So crab, Oh, speaking of this, so your hubby says, does anyone eat baked beans at a cookout? Okay, so let's talk about this because everyone baked, baked beans. Are beans in sugar or in salt form? Who made them? We want to know who made the baked beans. Are they mm -hmm. beans by themselves? Do they have ground beef in the beans, right? Because they come all kinds of ways. Um, so we need to know about these baked beans. One, baked thing we have, one thing we have learned since living here is that a lot of times the beans are not sweet. They're mm -hmm. salty to go along with like brisket or so. Correct. So Correct. the first time I had someone's beans right. here, it once again it was that expectation in the oh, mind and the palate. Yeah. And putting it in my mouth. And I was just like, oh sweet Jesus, this is <laughs> <in> <laughs> salt. Did someone mistake salt? 
for sugar. Just, right. <laughs> what just happened in someone's kitchen? You know, and I was just so disappointed because I was like, I've never had salty baked beans. It, it's not, it's not right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've never it's had salty right. baked beans. It's yeah, not that's... right. Oh, uh, and and I don't, I don't. Yeah, no, it, it. I don't ever want it again. To the point to where, here, since living here. Mm -hmm. That is one of the questions I am asking when we did go somewhere was who made the beans right. and what did you put in the beans? Are they sweet beans? Know, are they sweet? Are they on the salty side? So if they're right. on the salty side, it's a pass for me. It's a pass. Hmm. A salty baked bean. Right. As if, as if the barbecue and the brisket and everything else isn't already salty, then you're going to add more you would think people would want that right sweet salty mix but i have learned that that is more of an east coast thing mm -hmm. getting a sweet baked bean so right to answer to answer james's question once again <laughs> who made it right and then the second second follow-up question is is it sweet or are we looking at a little salty because otherwise no yeah, I agree with James. The cookout, um, meaning the summertime barbecue, culturally, mm -hmm. that's crucial. So when you're bringing food to share with others um, and we're not sure how their palates are, you really want to make sure that it's your best foot forward and, um, and that it's what people know the recipe should be. So please don't bring something that's abnormal. Um, it's just not going to go over really well. And there's no need to create that tension and that awkwardness um, <laughs> between you and your family members <laughs> so, so that they have to tell you that it's bad. Um, just bring what you know is kind of standard. And uh, if you want to try something different, you know, bring a little sample on the side and say, hey, you know, I, I'm trying a new recipe. What do you think? That's that's a different conversation. Right. Um, then it's being the whole dish that you were responsible for. And now it's an epic fail and uh, we will never invite you um, back again. Or we do, we know to ask you to bring ice or plastic wear. Right. Paper products. You can bring exactly. the soda, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> bring the drinks. Yeah. <laughs> bring the drinks. Yeah. You don't want that. You don't want that. So yeah. please govern yourselves accordingly. Okay. And, uh, and bring what you know we like. And, um, and if you don't know what people like, I also, um, to James's point, I'm a fan of catering. So if it's where I know I don't have it in my schedule to sometimes cook the things from scratch that I love to cook yeah. very much, I will call a restaurant that I know does it the best and I will put an order and for a catering tray and um, or a pan. And that's right. what I'm bringing to uh, the family meal because you want to bring your best foot forward and so um if you don't have time to cook it or if you don't have the, even the ability to cook it that's fine you know go ahead and run by a restaurant uh, you know call in catering and uh, and bring what is delicious because again food is an experience with family and those memories are really really precious <laughs> right and and will live forever so yeah. you can't you can't live down bad potato salad you no. can't live down salty beans. <laughs> you cannot live it down. Family will remember because that's what family does. It's family's job to remember that. <laughs> you remember yeah. the last time you brought something that and just, yeah, no. So, yeah, we're, we're trying to save you and do, do the whole world a favor uh, and focus on your lane, whatever God has given you in life. Focus on it because he gave me that gift for a reason. He gave me the gift to kill a lemon pound cake. He gave God when the gift to kill a lasagna. He gives us all gifts. The truth. That's your gift. On your gift. So we want to thank you guys for tuning in today. Uh, be sure to share this episode. If you haven't had a chance to look at any of the previous episodes, they're all on our Facebook page, which is titled Listen with Tania and Win. You can catch us here every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Central Time. 
and 6 p.m. Eastern time. And we have loved this time with you. Like we said, keep posting in the comments. We'll see them. We will, re we will respond. We love the engagement. Uh, make sure your notifications are turned on so you know the next time we drop some content. And uh, did you have any final words or suggestions, Ben? Anything you want to add? I think this is great. Um, I love their comments and their feedback. And so um, if they want to tell us next week, I know we have kind of a general overview of some of the topics we'd like to cover, but yeah. um, any trending topic that is out there that they would love to cover, um, you know, if it's in our, if it's in our wheelhouse, I'd love to be able to discuss. Thanks, Marcy. Thank you, um, Marcy. Yeah, we love their feedback. So, um, you know, tell us what topics you'd love to discuss. What do you want more information on? Um, and if there's something that we can contribute to you that's trending, um, we'd love to be able to talk about it. Yeah. And um, in the future, we will be even having a segment, an interview segment. So we're excited about putting together uh, a list of guests, some that we know personally, and even just some that will be even new to us soon. So we'll keep you posted. We'll let you know who the guests are um, once we have that lineup. So we're looking forward to even that. So it has been always a pleasure, everybody. We will see you here next week. Until then, keep listening. Keep listening. Okay. Bye. Take care. Have a great week, everyone. <laughs> Later.